Welcome to this uh, Esteric Edu uh, Circuits Insights mini course entitled High Input Voltage DC DC Converters. My name is uh, Bernhard Wicht and uh, I'm a professor at the Leibniz University Hanover, Germany. So there's a lot of very interesting and uh, very important applications that have very high, relatively high input voltages. Uh, it's in the area of mobility, automotive, industrial. We see some examples here on the left. And there is also uh, a, the trend for increasing voltages in communications and, um, for instance, IT servers. So the uh, particular examples are the uh, automotive 48 volts board net, which uh, comes in hybrid and electrical cars, as well as um, in IT servers, the uh, intermediate voltage increases to 48 volts. So with that, we somehow get such a high voltage up to 60 volts and above as an input. And we want to supply uh, electronics, which runs from lower voltages below five volts. So in the end, we see very large conversion ratios, um, input over output voltage. And uh, uh, this is required to supply various digital analog and mixed signal electronics those um, voltage regulators and converters they are placed at the point of load and as the uh, number of electronics is increasing also the um, number of such dc dc converters is increasing so we want to have uh, low cost solutions with a small feature size uh, on one hand on the other hand we also want to have high power efficiency so let's take a look at this simple setup, how to convert 12 volts into 2 volts. Um, if, we, um, if we use a resistor as shown here, and we have a 1 amp of load current, then uh, a 10 ohms resistor will do the job. It works great, but there is losses associated with it. The resistor itself burns 10 watts of power which is actually larger than the output power, which is two watts. So anyway, this is the concept of the linear voltage regulator, sometimes also called load dropout regulator or LDO. How do we get to higher efficiency? Uh, we use switch mode conversion. So again, the same setup. We now use a couple of switches and an LC tank to store the energy. So if we close the upper switch here, we bring energy into the system. And now such a switch with its two states uh, is actually ideally uh, not showing any uh, power losses as there is either the switch is off, we have zero current flowing, so the power is zero, or at the on state, Ideally, we have zero voltage drop across the switch. So uh, again, zero power. Of course, in reality, there is a couple of loss contributors, but uh, we still have the chance to get to very high efficiencies in the 90% range. The uh, real implementation uses uh, transistors as switches and now we, uh, one of the common concepts is to uh, generate pulse patterns at the switching node as shown here. And now the LC tank acts as a low pass filter, which provides a DC voltage at the output, which is uh, proportional to the average of the pulse pattern at the switching node. And by changing the pulse width, we can adjust the DC voltage at the output. So the concept of pulse width modulation is one of the key um, methods for efficient power conversion. If you replace these switches by transistors, we can either have those transistors off chip if there is large power required, or we place those transistors on one IC. The transistors still can handle a couple of amps on the die uh, which corresponds to output powers of a couple of watts for fully integrated solutions. On the PCB level, here we see a typical picture and we immediately realize 
that the IC itself is much smaller than the passive components L and C, here shown for example for an inductor. So the footprint is larger but also the height is, is uh, bigger. So now the trend goes towards shortening the energy storing time, which means we switch at faster rate. So if you go from nowadays state of the art, one megahertz of switching more or less towards 100 megahertz, the um, components get so small that they eventually be, can be integrated, co-integration, on-chip integration, there are several uh, approaches. So this brings a lot of advantages on a system, on system side. But with the increase in switching frequency, we also see an increase in losses. So the uh, power efficiency is one of the major challenges. Um, one example is shown here. So during the switching transition, the uh, I, the current, and the voltage are non-zero. So that forms this loss triangle here, which is referred to uh, switching losses. So even though the switch has no static losses or very low static losses, there are some switching losses. And there's a couple of concepts around to address these losses, which we will talk about in a few seconds. So the second uh, challenge is actually speed. So we implement these uh, DC-DC converters in certain semiconductor technologies, which provide components which uh, have limited uh, speed. We also see um, a challenge on circuit side. Um, maybe let's take this example. Uh, we want to generate pulses as shown here at switching frequencies of 30 megahertz. And now we can calculate the pulse width from this equation. Let's assume we do a 10 to 1 conversion. So for instance, we have a 50 volts input and we want to achieve 5 volts at the output. So V out over V in is uh, 1 over 10. 30 megahertz comes down to roughly 3 nanoseconds of pulse width. The transition itself from 0 to 50 volts at the switching node needs to happen in uh, less than 1 nanosecond. So this is quite a challenge and there are a couple of interesting circuits um, for uh, gate drivers, level shifters, um, pulse generation and so on. Um, we published uh, one interesting level shifter at SCIRC 2014 and there's also some more circuits at the JSSC um, July 2016. So the uh, third challenge is actually coupling effects which arise from the fast switching nature of these um, DC-DC converters. We get uh, coupling noise, substrate coupling, we get uh, EMC, electromagnetic compatibility issues. So uh, that is all linked together also with uh, requirements um, on the assembly, technology options, topics of slew rate control and converters in resonant operation. So I would like to focus again on the first challenge, the uh, increase in losses. And I would like to talk uh, briefly about these two concepts of soft switching and dead time control. So soft switching, in particular so-called zero voltage switching, tries to bring down the uh, drain source voltage to zero before the drain current builds up. So with that we would really reduce the, uh, the loss triangle here and get better power efficiency. So this is shown on this slide. Um, so the conventional approach utilizes hard switching so which turns on the device with full voltage across while soft switching uh, tries to get the voltage to z the volt zero volts across the device before we turn it on. That does not only reduce the switching losses but also reduces the parasitic charging losses at all the uh, parasitic capacitances involved here as shown here. So if we plot the losses over voltage then we first of all we see that uh, the losses significantly increase for higher input voltages. Uh, on the other hand, zero voltage switching, soft switching brings down a significant part of the losses. So it's very attractive. Uh, now the question is how 
can we implement this zero voltage switching? One of the um, common concepts is to go to resonant conversion by adding an additional uh, LC tank that brings our voltage to a low level, ideally to zero volts. So one of the such concepts um, we have presented at uh, ISSCC 2017, we call the architecture parallel resonant converter. So what we do is we use a conventional buck converter, conventional um, pulse width modulated uh, DC-DC converter, and we add an additional resonant circuit to it. So as in the conventional um, implementation, the pulse width modulation of the main power switch controls the output voltage. And, uh, but we, with the second switch here, we have also uh, an additional way to uh, change the on time. And that's exactly what is, uh, allows us to achieve zero volts across the main switch if we turn it on. This is in this very moment. So uh, we also implement a uh, binary weighted capacitor array, which uh, also can be adjusted such that the resonant switch sees zero voltage switching in addition to the main switch. So we have a resonant converter which utilizes soft switching to enhance the efficiency. Actually, the whole concept is verified to operate at switching frequencies up to 25 megahertz. So the second concept I would like to talk about is that time control. Um, why do we need that time control? So let's take a look again at the power stage. So this is the uh, DC-DC converter power stage half bridge. We first want to turn off one device before we turn on the other one. Otherwise we would get cross currents and this will may even cause damage. And of course there are losses associated with it. However, we cannot extend the losses to uh, the, the, the dead time uh, too, too long because there are other loss components coming in like uh, body diode conduction and reverse recovery. So in the end, there's an optimum dead time which brings us minimum losses. There is a potential to reduce the losses by more than 25%. So also an example for uh, dead time control shown here. So uh, again, this is the power stage and what this um, circuit does, we implement predictive dead time control, which means that we uh, set the dead time cycle by cycle and control it so that we cycle by cycle achieve the optimum value. So we sample the switching node at the low side turn on a couple of times and we want to have the switching of the low side if the switching node is around zero, zero volts. So how we, do we do that? We sample it by an analog sample and hold stage which uh, is shown here in this blue box. We use a RC voltage divider to bring down the high voltage at the switching node into the low voltage domain in order to be able to use low voltage components uh, further on. We um, then use window comparators to see are we within the window around zero volts. If not, a counter is decreased or increased accordingly so that we adjust the dead time cycle by cycle. We uh, adjust the dead time with this uh, delay line, which is basically using um, CMOS inverters. We uh, achieve a minimum um, dead time of 125 picoseconds with an 8-bit resolution, which uh, allows us to go up to 32 nanoseconds of dead time. So all in all, we reduce the losses by 30%, which corresponds to an increase in uh, efficiency by 6%, shown here over load current at an operating frequency of uh, 10 megahertz. So that concept actually received the best paper award at SCIRC 2015, and there are some follow-up papers later on as shown here. 
So let's uh, take a look at the state of the art. Actually, uh, what I'm showing here in this diagram is the uh, input voltage versus efficiency for a lot of available commercial parts as well as scientific publications. So uh, actually we see from this graph that we have all solutions available to address most of the requirements. If we now plot the same parts with the uh, frequency at the x, x axis, we see that uh, most parts operate at frequencies below 5 MHz. This is exactly because of the challenges we just discussed. So uh, we also see the uh, upper limit here of 30 MHz that we have uh, quickly looked at. And the range in between 10 and 30 MHz is not well covered yet. Actually, th there are a couple of data points here, 10 MHz, which is our daytime control uh, converter. And I've also now added the uh, results for the parallel resonant converter, which I also have shown. Uh, here we achieve 25 MHz of um, PWM frequency with uh, an input voltage of uh, 24 volts at reasonable efficiencies. So uh, I would like to thank Jürgen Wittmann who has um, done significant research in the area of high V-in uh, DC-DC converters over the last couple of years, which was partially funded by Bosch. And uh, great results are only possible with great people. So I really would like to thank uh, the people in my research teams uh, based in Reutlingen and Hanover. These are the references I have um, talked about. I would uh, like to thank you for attending this mini course. I uh, will be happy to answer your question. Feel free to contact me by email anytime.